Okay, today I promise no Otani talk. Today we're only going to talk about teams that actually went to the World Series. You are a Locked On Diamondbacks, your daily Arizona Diamondbacks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, baseball fans, and welcome to an old school Locked On Diamondbacks, Locked On MLB crossover. Today, we're going to be talking about the defending National League champions, the Arizona Diamondbacks. I am your host for today. My name is Paul Francis Silva. Please call me Sully. And this guy right over here, our dear old friend and the man with the championship belt, at least in terms of the National League, please sign in. Yeah, I was ready to be called the Baja Galoop or whatever nickname you usually give me. But uh, Miller Thomas, host of Locked on Dimebacks here. Yeah, ready to talk about the NL champs coming out and firing opening series weekend. Of course, got to take it with a grain of salt against the Colorado Rockies. But don't take it with too much of a grain of salt because last year the Diamondbacks gave us all a clinic of how to be an unexpected team and hang on to win a National League pennant. And a couple of teams out there that are off to great starts should take a good long look to see what they're doing. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets. It's your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to win. Follow us at Locked On MLB Pods on Twitter and Instagram. I'm your pal Sully with Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast and Instagram. Build, where, where can they follow you? Yeah, catch us where every stream podcasting platforms locked on Dimebacks. Also locked on Dimebacks on YouTube. Please hit subscribe on there as well. And a uh, quick to the trivia question that uh, a, an everyday Sully named uh, Argonaut Comedy got it correct. And the question was, who was the last Yankee pitcher to throw a complete game victory to clinch the World Series. A bunch of people wrote in CC Sabathia. CC Sabathia actually, and this is why I'll give you some of you partial credit for that. He was the last Yankee pitcher to clinch a postseason series with a complete game victory. Did that in the 2012 Division Series. But the last one to throw a complete game to clinch the World Series for the Yankees was Mike Torres. Ooh. who threw the complete game to clinch the 1977 World Series. And Yankee fans remember him more because he left the Yankees, signed with the Red Sox, and gave up the famous Bucky Dent home run in the 1978 playoff, of which there are Red Sox fans to this day believe that he was a Yankee double agent and gave up that home run because he was still a Yankee at heart. Those people, I hope, got the counseling and the help that they so desperately need. But here's somebody who doesn't need counseling for sorrow. Miller Thomas, your Diamondbacks not only won the pennant last year, Mm -hmm. stunning LA, of which Clayton Kershaw got only one more out recorded than me, and stunned Philadelphia, who looked like they were steamrolling them in the first couple of games. And of course, they, they... couldn't take it all the way. They wound up, you know, they, they didn't get swept. No. You know, they, they, they actually, they were on the verge of winning game one. But as you know, the D-backs um, won the pennant last year and had a terrific offseason, in my very humble opinion. Hell of an offseason. And now, granted, they're playing the Rockies. But if you want to repeat, you got to beat the teams you're supposed to beat. Tell us what you think about your team, their addition, and whether or not they're going to pull Operation 2015 Royals and go back and finish the job. That's the goal, right? Royals go in 2014. They don't win the World Series. Go back in 2015, win the whole thing. D-backs, though, did a lot more in their offseason than the 2015 Royals did. So hopefully they're new additions because that's maybe where you want to start. I think immediately we look at Eugenio Suarez over there at Mm -hmm. third base. 
massive upgrade over Evan Longoria from last year, who would just, you know, an old statue, which is no disrespect to Evan Longoria. He would just outside of his prime. Eugenio, you can see the power. You can see a little bit more mobility over there defensively as well. Jock Peterson, he was seven for seven, reaching base safely in his first uh, seven plate appearances for the Arizona Dimebacks. So the new additions for the D-backs so far so good have looked really good. I think this D-backs team from last season one of the mindsets they need to have entering this year was to keep that hunger, right? Not just look at last year and be like, okay, we were ahead of schedule. Maybe we are just happy and satisfied with the success that we had last year. Yeah. No, they went to this off season. They addressed all their needs and now entering the regular season, I think you can see with the players that they've added, they want to come and they want to join the, that amazing roster and camaraderie that was there last year. And then everyone that was in the world series last year, they are playing with the chip on their shoulder. The gowns of the world have talked about it. The Martes of the world have talked about it. Like they are on a redemption tour this season. And you can see it from the way Marte has come out swinging the bat. Lords Gurriel looks like the MVP as we begin the season. 10 RBIs in that series against the Colorado Rockies. Like Corbin Carroll hasn't even really gotten going yet. This D-backs team from a team batting average, one of the best we've seen in the last 50 years since like the 1973 Red Sox or whatever. So to start the year, yes, it's the Colorado Rockies. They're going to be one of the worst teams in the National League. But I think from a mentality standpoint, you can see the D-backs are hungry. They're trying to redeem themselves from not finishing job in the World Series. You can see how the new additions are going to help this d back squad out because I think this is going to be one of the most well-balanced rosters throughout the Major League season from an offensive, defensive pitching perspective. I think it's one of the most loaded teams that we've ever seen in D-backs franchise history. And you take a look at also the fact that, first of all, it's going to be very, very confusing that you have both Jock Peterson and Jace Peterson on the yeah. same team. That is the uh, Dylan McDermott, Dolman Mulrooney, uh, Bill Pullman, Bill Paxton of Arizona. But bringing in someone like Peterson, or bringing in Suarez mm -hmm. was was key to filling holes, maybe not with the, the sexiest moves, but with really smart moves. But then you take a look at, this is one of the reasons why I'm super excited for this Arizona team. And in, in section two, I really want to break down why the Diamondbacks should be the model for any team not called the Dodgers for how to build your team up here that they looked at their strength. Their strength, I felt last year, was their top of the rotation was mm -hmm. very, very good. And then you had Fott, who did very well in the postseason last year, that he's going to be there with Gallon and Kelly. But then they went out and they brought in Eduardo Rodriguez, who, again, he's not a Cy Young contender, but he's a solid major league pitcher with postseason experience under his belt. And then they looked around and so, wait a minute, nobody wants to sign Jordan Montgomery? Really? Yeah, like nobody? The before, the nobody wants to? Well, if nobody wants to, we know he's a good pitcher of the postseason because he was celebrating in Arizona while all the other Diamondbacks were walking off with their heads down. So, yeah, why don't we take him on a flyer with a chip on his shoulders? And I think that that move was really great because you're not asking Montgomery to be the ace, and you're also saying, hey – do you need a little bit of time to get up to speed because you didn't really have spring training? Fine, we got the pitching staff to do that. And so now you look up, they've strengthened their strength and they filled in the holes intelligently. And this is a team that I think, I mean, how many did they wind up winning last year? Was it like 80? It was 84? Yeah, 84 with 80? a negative run differential. Yeah, well, I think this is easily a 90 win team. Yeah, if you go to FanDuel, you could probably still get plus odds on that too. Probably like plus 250, plus 300 for D-backs to win 90 games. Like you said with the rotation, I mean, I think it's definitely in the conversation to be the best rotation in Major League Baseball because when you enter a playoff series, like it only matters who your top four are. And the idea of your number three, number four starters being Jordan Montgomery and Eduardo Wad e -Rod, I'm just going to say E-Rod. Just say e -Rod, Just say e -Rod, yeah. yeah. I tried to say his name. I was like, this is not happening right there. Uh, E-Rod yeah. and Monty being your number three and number four starters. Like, how many teams can throw out that level uh, of ceiling when it comes to the middle of your rotation? Like, the Braves might be throwing out Chris Sale and, like, a Charlie Morin. And mm -hmm. a team like the, the Dodgers might be throwing out, like, Bobby Miller or Clayton Kershaw, who... All those guys are respectively good, but I think Erod and Monty, at their best, are 
just a different level right now compared to the rest of the number three, four starters in Major League Baseball. So that D-back rotation and the fact that, like you said, Fiat had to step up in a big way last year, the wild card in the rotation. Now he's your number five starter going to your long reliever out the pen. And just, you know, in case of injury, he's going to be the go-to guy that's going to step up in the postseason for you. I think the D backs have crazy depth. Like we said, Monty and Erod are not going to be there to start the season the first couple of weeks, but you still got Ryan Nelson, who was third on this team last year in innings pitch. He's mm-hmm. still in the mix. He's going to be backing up while those guys are out. Tommy Henry was a solid starter last year for the D-backs. Like, they have the depth behind their top four to withstand these, withstand these injuries, and that's so important as you go through Which one gives season. them time to, to, to let Montgomery get up to speed instead yeah. of rushing him out there and getting him injured. But by the way, you were saying I should go to FanDuel – to uh, bet on whether or not the the D backs are gonna get their ninety wins. Mm-hmm. Well, let me tell you something here. For the in case you've been wondering, FanDuel is America's number one sports book. And do you want know the sports calendar is absolutely loaded right now, and FanDuel is making it more exciting to get in on the action right now. New customers get two hundred dollars in bonus bets winning any $5 bet. No matter what it is, you're doing baseball, you're doing the NCAA tournament, you want to go do the women's tournament, the men's tournament, and soon as Stanley Cup playoffs are coming around, NBA playoffs are coming around, go to FanDuel. That's $200 in bonus bets of any winning bet you can use on any tournament you want to put it on. I think that was a sentence. Visit <laughs> FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. And don't forget as well to use LinkedIn Sales Navigator because are you struggling to close deals? B2B selling is tougher than ever. And that's why I want to tell you about LinkedIn Sales Navigator. LinkedIn Sales Navigator is a sales intelligence platform that helps professionals effectively prospect and engage high value customers, drive higher revenue and increase sales performance. Sales Navigator helps you target the right buyers, surface key signals such as job changes or which accounts you should prioritize, and shows you hidden allies so you can find those buyers that are most likely to convert. Fueled by LinkedIn's 1 billion member platform, Sales Navigator gives you the most up-to-date first-party data enabling you to unlock conversations with people that matter. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash locked on. That is linkedin.com slash locked on for a 60-day free trial. Let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Just go to linkedin.com slash locked on and get started. Hey, are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? You have to turn down the volume with all that shouting. You need a calm voice like mine. Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 streaming, not screaming channel, programmed for you every day to bring you the best stories in all of sports. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or on the free Amazon Fire TV's channel app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Uh, Miller, today... The uh, D backs managed to hold on and beat the uh, beat the Rockies. So they they took three out of four. I don't care who you're playing. You mm-hmm. go into someone's ballpark and you that's you take three out of four games. That's that's solid. That's what you you should want to do. And for a team like the D backs, you want to get out of the gate really well. I feel badly for a team like the Rockies who have absolutely bottom of the ocean bad expectations and then to yeah. come out stumbling the way that they did. I mean, the first game was just, uh, I actually, I was uh, at that game. It was silly to be there for the third inning. I mean, to see the 14 runs and like the merry go round with no home runs. I mean, I thought the inning was never going to end. Well, you know, I was, I saw it was two to one and I flipped over to another, I was watching another game and that game went into, uh, you know, went in between innings. So I flipped back to check the scores and suddenly it was like 13 to two or something. 
And I just said, oh, God. I mean, I just, I, it was like, which is, I believe, what the guard said in Silence of the Lambs when seeing Hannibal Lecter's handiwork. You should not think of Silence of the Lambs when you look at a score, but that's exactly what I did. And, and today, I mean, the, I give the Rockies credit that they won the third game, mm-hmm. but today they were a mess. Yeah. And the, the left fielder, who was the left fielder? Was Nolan it, was it Jones. Nolan Jones, who's not a bad player. He's a talented He's player. Good. He had a great season last year. He was he had a gold glove caliber season last year, if I'm not mistaken, but you would not know that today. It was a, it was a key moment of the game. It was three to one. There was a runner on, I believe a runner on second and with two outs, lazy fly ball. <laughs> yeah. Just and I, I was listening to the uh, the Rockies feed when that when that happened, and the Rockies announced, like, "Oh, they're going to get out of it." Oh no, they don't. And that was it. Was just such a sense of resign, just regret from the radio announcers for Colorado that it just it wasn't like he lost in the sun. It's mm-hmm. a dome stadium. He just it was a right fielder in a little league game. Strong clunk right off of his glove. And one run came in, and another run came in later, and basically put the game away. It was yeah. a close. It was three to one at that point, and then it, it was it was became five to one. And if you're the Rockies, you can't afford to do that. You can't afford to. They made three errors today. You're yeah. already bad. And you can see him yelling at himself after because that. Unfortunately for Nolan Jones, this series, like great offensive player, but it was a defensive struggle for him in left field. Going back to the first and second game, like anytime the D backs hit him out to him in left field, it felt like good things were going to happen for the D backs. He took bad angles to balls. He had a couple mistakes, like we saw out there today and in previous games this series. Like, I don't know what happened to Nolan Jones defensively. It was kind of like he had a set of the yips because he looked very unconfident and unsure in, unsure in himself at times when he was playing defense, uh, left field this series and overall the the Rockies defense just didn't really help out their pitchers too much I thought they were fine in game one but for most of the series just did not help out their pitchers and like you said when you're a team playing on the margins your talent level already isn't on the same as the you know other teams in baseball you kind of have to play uh perfectly in the areas that you can and dropping balls easy routine fly balls you just can't do that for the Rockies so let's take take a look a little bit of what the D-backs are showing baseball right now Mm -hmm. because they went in, they obviously exceeded expectations last year by winning the pennant. But they went into this year not being content with that and not being reckless, not just sort of signing people to giant contracts, everything like that, but fulfilling the needs. And they seem to be learning from the lesson that the 2021 Atlanta Braves gave us, which was fill your holes with major leaguers. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. they that's where they brought in Rosario and Soler and Peterson, and they had glaring holes on their team, and they didn't fill them with the sexiest players. They just filled them with good players. And the D backs seemed to do that by bringing Peterson again, making the, the making the improvement at third base. They saw for us we all loved Evan Longoria, but we all knew he was also cooked. He was cooked. He was, yeah. he was cooked. I mean, it was nice to see. He probably was his last game. It was nice when you see a player like that finish his career in the World Series, but that's it. And now they've made a huge upgrade at third base. And they've and bringing back, you know, having Guriel back in the team and and also addressing the rotation and addressing the pitching staff. A lot of times the best way to improve a bullpen is to strengthen your rotation and give you the depth because we've learned over the last few years that the depth – is the depth of a pitching staff is what takes you a long way. But here is the thing. I'm going to say something right now, Miller Thomas. Okay. For people who are mad at me of monopolizing this, you're going to have to deal with it. The Arizona Diamondbacks showed us last year that you can get to October early in the year. Because when you see the team, they got off to a terrific start last year. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they, I mean, they start off like they had what 16 and 13 and through April, but then they had a dynamic May. There were 17 yeah. and 10 in May. There were 16 and 11 in June. They built up a lead over the Dodgers. They were ahead in, they had a four game lead in the middle of June. They just looked like, Oh my God, they may win the division. Yeah. Tie for the lead at the all-star break. 
And then after the All-Star break, it was a, a calamity. Yeah. They had a horrific July. They had a Big lousy time. August. They had a mediocre September. But they got and they and they they had a bad ending. They 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 stumbled into the playoffs by the end of that year, and it you know I believe they clinched on a loss, but yeah. like they they lost they got like, like swept to like the Astros end of the year. That's right. The Astros <laughs> swept them. You know the Yankees beat them like a like a drum. You know the Mets swept them. All these teams swept them in September, and they looked dead from the neck up. But they had won so many games in the first half of the year that they were able to withstand that terrible finale. And so when you look at teams that are off to hot starts, and I've been preaching this to the Central teams because there's no clear front runner in the NL or AL Central. If you're the Pirates coming in and winning all four in Miami, or if you're Milwaukee looking great in playing the Mets, get build those wins up now. Pile them up now because – they matter, and the Diamondbacks went to the World Series despite being not ba- not okay, not mediocre, but terrible for a giant stretch of the second half of the season. But it was all based on the first half that got them in. Yeah, the only thing they did right in the last six weeks was literally they beat the teams in like the NL wildcard race. Those were the only teams they beat, which was the teams that affected their standing. So good job on them for at least doing that, but. That's the thing with baseball. Even after 162 games, it still comes down to the final week for the standings. And that's why you have to win the games early because you would think after 162, there would be a greater margin when you get to the end. But still, you're still at times sometimes needing that game 163 to still decide the playoffs. So it's like, why not stack up wins in the beginning? So many times people people are like, oh, let's not. You know, take advantage right now. Let's maybe save this guy or save that guy. And they're it's some truth to that, but you also can't just save your guys for the whole season and just wait for the second half. If you have an opportunity to win and steal games early in the year, you want to stack up as much of that as possible. And then maybe at the end of the year, you can rest your guys a little bit and actually get healthy for the postseason. So I just think there's way more benefit to trying early and saving your guys late than trying to do the reverse and seeing what happens. Well, why don't you rest the guys when they're tired? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I know that's, a, that's an astonishing thought, but that shouldn't that be what you do? OK, they're tired now. By the way, I just looked up on a baseball reference dot com, the single greatest website in the history of the planet Earth. And you're right. In that horrible final five weeks of the season, they managed to beat the Cubs six out of seven times. Yeah, like that. It was stuff like that. The Padres, they beat at, at the very end. Like, and just rem- the, 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 the Cubs team. finished, I think, a game behind Arizona. If mm-hmm. I'm not mistaken, and the Cubs and the uh, the Cubs and the Padres were only a tiny bit ahead of them, and you look at those, they went to Wrigley. the The D backs went to Wrigley and won three out of four, and then the then the Cubs came to to uh, I keep wanting to call it Bank One Ballpark, um, and uh, and they swept them, including that walk off uh, in the thirteenth inning. Um, but yeah, it was like they 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 strategically won a few games there, but uh, but they needed those wins early on. And if you're, you know, a team like the, I I keep pointing to a team like the pirates Mm -hmm. who won another thriller on Sunday against Miami. They won two extra inning games in the sweep in Miami. And again, they're in Miami's home. That was a team that made the playoffs last year. I mean, I think they're greatly reduced in talent this year, but still it's not like, it's not like they're playing the Rockies, you know, and Mm -hmm. it's not like they're playing the A's. But the fact that they went in, they won the, all of the games, two of them in real dramatic fashion. And you're playing in a division which 85 wins might win it, especially if the Cubs stub their toe. Then you could, or you know, 86 wins will probably get you in the wild card if you're the Pirates. So get, pile those up now. If 86 is. The the will is the number they'll get you into the wild card. That means they have to win eighty one more games. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, like I know it's ridiculous. It's not even April yet, but this this the Diamondbacks are the living proof of what you'd have to do in order to get it, in order to be able to withstand that. 
Yeah, I and, loved your point earlier about just adding quality major leaguers to the lineup like what the Braves did in the past because we look at that like five through seven now of the D-backs when it is the Jock, the Suarez, the Gabriel Moreno's five through seven. The the depth of the lineup is just so much stronger when you have the, those quality of players down in your lineup. And now a guy like Alec Thomas can be a big wild card piece for you if he can ever figure it out offensively. A guy like Gerardo Perdomo coming off an all-star season, great play discipline as your number nine hitter that can reset the lineup for you once you get back to the Martes and the Carols at the top. I just think having quality major leaguers like the jocks and the 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 Swarzes of the world in the middle of your lineup now um, just helps out this D-back ceiling so much going forward. I don't know about you, but I like having my TV experience simplified. I want things in the same place, and I want high-quality shows to watch. Well, guess what? Fire TV, that's your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing television that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live television. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brand all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On, Millard and I are going to be there, and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the in-game analysis, highlights, and more. To keep up to date on the latest of the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, Major League Baseball, lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, comedy, gaming, travel, cooking videos. Huh? Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. And Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Now it's available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, available on the free Fire TV's channels app. So, by the way, i got to give uh, John Murphy Jr., who's another everyday Sully, who uh, also got the Mike Torres question right, that he was the one who clinched the 77 World Series. I, I see you, John. You've been heard. So you take a look at some of the teams that have sputtered out of the gate. Um, I love at this time of the year, and, and let's just savor this one moment. A lot of Astro haters are out there. I'm not a classic Astro hater. I actually rooted for them to win because I liked Dusty Baker. But as of this recording, the A's have a better record than the Astros. Mm, that's kind of crazy, actually. That's what, I mean, It's not opening day, and it's the A's have a better too. Yeah, I mean, look at for for the, for the A's. This might be the only day you could say it. So savor that, A's fans. But you take a look and you see some of the some of the matchups that you know came around early. I mean, the you could see. I, I keep pointing to the Pirates because I'm 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 fascinated by a team that's on the periphery jumps out four nothing. The Brewers jump out three nothing. You know, the Twins. You know, Twins got clobbered by Bobby Wood Jr. and company. But, you know, they look solid in that series against the Royals. And then the Tigers are, a cla- by the way, the Tigers are a classic example. There is no front runner in the American League Central. There isn't. Neither Central. And so, well, yeah, I mean, you could maybe say the Cubs, but they've had some interest. So, yeah, I made this point the other day. Neither Central team has any leg up. So start piling up those wins now. And that's key for the Tigers, who are the team that I picked to win the AL Central just because, Ooh. well, because someone has to, you know, yeah. the, people the love the rotation too. People think they have yeah. a stack rotation. And they pitched well today. They won three to two and they swept the White Sox. And despite the White Sox playing well in most of the games, Luis Robert Jr. had a couple of home runs the other day. And, uh, but today was another, um, you know, Gary Carpenter's home run in that game. But, you know, the the Tigers wound up winning that game. And if you start to see, especially those head-to-head matchups, the Tigers hold out and wind up winning those 84 games. They just have to win 81. You know, it's yeah. it's, it's it's silly. It's silly to talk like that. But 
especially when you have when your team on the periphery, if you come out of the gate looking terrible, then it just you just sort of slump. Like, oh God, they were right. And if you're the Season Tigers, like, oh, yeah, it's, but you know, Tigers look around, and go, wait a minute. All right, we're, we're, this is this is okay. This is okay. And do you know what team did that exact thing last year? The <laughs> Diamondbacks. Hey, us. The Diamondbacks started the season without a lot of expectations. They got off to a good start. We're in first place for a chunk of April, and they kind of looked around and said, "Hey, well, why not us? Why not us?" And I bet if I went back and listened to what you and I were talking about, I bet we were being very dismissive about it, and yet. Who was standing there in the World Series? I believe that was Arizona. In fact, I think you have something right behind you. Hey, oh yeah, I do. I don't know if I could get the camera there. NL champion. Hey, there's your championship there. So there you go. So tell me your thoughts. What do you think about um, as uh, the Diamondbacks are looking to do Operation 2015 Royals? Uh, which one of the teams that are kind of floating around wondering who the hell they are will be able to replicate a little bit of the Diamondbacks magic for this year. Well, I want to first talk about a team that the D-backs were actually going to be playing next that oh, have yeah. gone off to a hot start against those Houston mm. Astros because I was telling That's my roommate rough. today, uh, everyone's talking about Otani looking perfect in Dodgers blue. I actually prefer Otani in red. Hopefully one day we could get him in some Sedona red. I actually mm. think Juan Soto looks perfect in a Yankees yes. uniform. I actually think it looks seamless. It looks natural. And, his swing in Yankee Stadium already the way he's off to a hot start. Um, I, I think he's going to be one of the greatest Yankees of all time. And now Yankee, uh, the, the Yankees are coming to Arizona next this upcoming week, starting Monday to take on the Arizona Dimebacks. Not very often those two franchises, you know, uh, get to face off against each other. Of course, a lot of history going back to the 01 World Series. So seeing Juan Soto back in the NLS against the D-backs, uh, very exciting series coming up, and we're going to see the number five starter, Ryan Nelson, go against the number five starter for the Yankees, Lewis Gill, on Monday. So I'm very excited for that one. Well, you first of all, you better hope that the Yankees uh, uh, were uh, overachieving in Houston. Yeah, we're gonna, we're going to find out if the Yankees are off to a hot start or the Astros are off to a terrible start. That's what we're going to find out. And we should also, uh, if you're a D-backs fan, should be thankful that you're not going to be facing Garrett Cole. Yeah. You know, that so just uh, and, uh, you know, get, jump on their pitchers early and don't give them outs. We'll be going against former NL West rival Car- uh, Carlos Rodon, though, in this series. So hopefully we do yeah. have a little bit of experience against him. But to answer your question real quick from before, I think the team that I would watch out for is maybe having that run like the D-backs from last season. I think it's a pretty favorite dark horse pick by a lot of people, but I would go the Cincinnati Reds. The pitching mm-hmm. is the biggest question mark for me. Can Hunter Green take the next step? What does a guy like Frankie Montes give you in the Graham Ashcrafts of the world? But you look at that lineup, the depth of young stars. I mean, the, the this Reds lineup is going to be looking like an Atlanta-esque lineup in the next couple of years as those guys start to mature. You're going to be like, dang, that Reds lineup seven, eight deep when it comes to young stars in Major League Baseball. They just need to get their pitching around. And if they could do that, they could go on that D-back Cinderella-esque run this season, I think. Yeah, and I'm a fan of the Pirates because if if Cruz and Hayes could take both take the next step to superstardom, then that's uh, that's a huge step for this team. Well, look at let's go before we wrap up here. I'm going to throw the trivia question out in honor of you, Millard. I decided to make it a Arizona based trivia question, and that is, don't don't say if you know it. Who was the first player ever drafted by the Diamondbacks? Not in the expansion draft. But in the amateur draft, who was their first ever first round pick, the first player that they brought into their system through the draft that they did two years before they played their first game because they needed to build up a farm system? Who was the Diamondbacks first ever pick in many ways? Who was the original Diamondback? That's your question. Put it down here in YouTube and, or whether it's Locked On Diamondbacks YouTube or Locked On MLB's YouTube. Follow us at Locked On MLB Pods on Twitter and Instagram. I'm your pal, Sully Mitt, Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Miller, tell people where they can find you. Yeah, please follow me. Please follow me wherever you stream podcasting platforms, Locked On Diamondbacks. Follow me on Twitter at CareerThomas24 for the personal account. Look on Diamondbacks, both Twitter and Instagram for the podcast handle. And please hit subscribe to Locked On Diamondbacks on YouTube. 
talking about the defending National League champions and seeing what people can learn from their strategy. This has been a Locked On Diamondbacks, Locked On MLB crossover. He's Miller Thomas. I'm your pal, Sully. Hey, for old time's sake, let's fist pump. Ooh.